Hey guys, here's a video showing my experience with getting Chinese engine tin to fit a uh, 1600 dual port motor. Um, this tin is particular tin that I got is from MP, but I think they're all pretty much coming out of the same factory, MP, SCAD, etc. So I'm going to kind of go through piece by piece here at least briefly and just show you guys what I did to fit this particular motor. Yours may be a little different, but uh, again, we'll go through and maybe maybe some of this will be helpful to some people. Just some things to kind of look out for. So let's start with the uh, with the, the breastplate here. Um, so this plate was too tight right in here. It was hitting um, it was hitting the cylinder tin. I probably trimmed nearly an eighth inch off uh, right in this area here of that. Uh, before I did that, it was hitting the cylinder tin and then the screw hole wasn't lining up the the hole on on this plate was too far this way it just it wouldn't it wouldn't go that far so mainly this one trimmed it around here and then on this side a little bit of the same thing but not as much it was actually fine up around here unlike the other side on this one it was more right in here that it was hitting so pretty much on this plate here and here were the areas to look out for so let me talk next about the fan shroud. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and I'll be right back. Okay, I lied. I'm not pulling it off quite yet because this is really important to show you. So one thing that I noticed was, was that when I had it mocked up, initially what I did was I took the fan shroud and I just bolted the uh, alternator or generator, same, same difference for this purposes. I bolted that on and set the whole thing down on here. And, you know, it, it fit and seemed fine. But then what I noticed when I started looking carefully was, was that at the back of the generator where it sits on the generator stand or alternator, uh, there was actually a gap on this side and none on this side. So what that meant was that the whole fan shroud was basically sitting too high. And so the alternator was basically sitting like this where it was touching the stand around the front but not on the back. And I could actually take a little tool like this and pretty much shove it in this gap here it was it was that much space so you know a couple millimeters so i'm going to come back to that in a second and show you what i had to do to to fix that so let me go ahead and pull this off all right we're back so the issue with this fan shroud really going down in this direction far enough was pretty much along the bottom edge here and on this particular one it was mostly on the one two side although there was a little issue also on the three four side and mostly on this side of the motor although there was uh i think i did a tiny bit of trimming back here so let me go ahead and remove this the rest of the way but what i was talking about earlier with the with the generator on here was if you just put the fan shroud on again down as far as it would go and then you took the generator and you set it here with it laying flat in here you could see that the holes were too high on the fan shroud by you know probably almost like a quarter inch honestly it was a lot so it's important to check that this is that your generator is fitting on here and lining up with these holes instead of just kind of bolting your generator onto the fan shroud and dropping it on and seeing like oh hey you know it's touching here we're good to go because again, on this one, the whole thing was basically tilted up like that. Okay, hold on a sec. All right, here we go. So pull this off and we'll talk about what we had to do on this. So basically I looked for where this bottom edge was hitting the engine case pretty much along here and also on here. And I probably on this side trimmed probably an eighth of an inch. I just use a, a silver Sharpie, which marks this, marks uh, on black pretty nicely, easy to see. So again, mostly on this side, a little bit on this side, but then actually the curve here of this piece where, it, where it's supposed to clear this case hardware, it was actually resting on top of that. So like basically once I trimmed these things down to where they could go down, then the next issue was actually in here. So basically with this, I basically took a big pair of channel locks and kind of made this bend uh, go more that way, especially up in here. You can kind of see where I marked it, where I've um, massaged it. It looks a little bit ugly. This doesn't show and it's all gonna be powder coated and everything anyway, but this is where I had to spend some time 
here again to get the fan shroud to come down all the way and then on the back uh, I only trimmed a little bit on this side so it's kind of a process where you just go and you test fit things you see what's hitting uh, and then you trim it a little bit you know take your time I think I trimmed this fan shroud probably two or three separate times in in many of these locations you know you don't want to overdo it and then have a huge gap uh, so you want to kind of do it a little bit at a time until everything fits perfectly like like this does now so let's talk about the actual cylinder tins here then so the cylinder tins had a huge gap between the motor the engine case and this uh, area right here and so what was actually happening on these was was that i don't know if you'll be able to see this down in here or not let's see if i can get this to focus so yeah you see there by the spark plug right there and then back there, focus, yeah. So the cylinder head was actually hitting the tin and preventing the tin from going any more uh, this way, inboard. So basically what I did was I took a rubber mallet and pretty much worked on the tin by hitting it around here in this area, likewise on this area, because basically Again, there's metal of the cylinder head right behind here and here and here and here. So short of removing metal from the cylinder head, which of course I didn't want to do, you pretty much have to move the tin kind of that way above where, those, um, where that interference is with the cylinder head. So again, take your time, take a mallet, try and hit on this uh, seam right here, there and there. And it actually didn't take as much as I thought to kind of get the cylinder tin to move in pretty much all the way to the case there. And then since this car has dual, uh, dual port uh, manifolds and dual carburetors, I basically had to also take the cylinder tin and convince it to go that way a bit where it, it rides against the mating surface here for the intake manifold. You can see I basically took the intake manifold and marked the line at, at its base with a sharpie and then just gently hit the tin along here with uh, essentially like a small piece of wood and again the rubber mallet to move it that way where this would clear so that way you know that your intake manifold is going to bolt down squarely. So those are pretty much the things that I did to get it to fit right. Uh, it still doesn't fit quite as nice as factory tin. But, you know, this is an aftermarket motor, hot rod motor. The, we didn't have the original tin for it, and it's going to be all powder coated and everything anyway. So, uh, but yeah, that's basically what I did. Pretty happy with how it fits now overall. And probably spent a couple hours, maybe three hours total on it getting it to fit. But what a difference. It actually, I think, now looks acceptable. Thanks for watching. Bye.